Hey there nation, welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with another episode of Cheap Shots. This is episode number 20, and on this episode we're going to show you guys how to cheaply and quickly paint up Warcry Untamed Beasts. So this is another one of our little painting tutorial videos we're having on. This is the final result what your miniature will look like by the time you get done painting with our quick paint method. At the same time, not only are you going to paint these guys really quickly, but you're also going to save a ton of money in order to make it do that as well and this is actually one of our cheapest builds that we actually have done because we end up using a very limited color palette and we actually repeated several of the same colors that we used throughout in order to make this model really pop really stand out so that being said ladies and gentlemen let's get this video on a roll and show you exactly how to paint up some untamed beasts and save a bunch of money at the same time let's get it on all right, so step number one, you gotta do a primer as well as a base coat for all of your miniatures. And I suggest that you actually spray paint and prime all of your miniatures in exactly the same color. As you can see here, I used rust Paint Plus Primer Satin Finish. I used uh, Espresso Spray Paint, is what I use for these guys. And I sprayed the entirety of the Warband in this color. Now the reason why we did this is because the Untamed Beasts have a very limited color palette. They use a lot of earth tone colors for a lot of their clothing. They also have a lot of fur on these miniatures as well, as well as a lot of leather strips and one of the most frustrating the thing to do in order to paint on miniatures is to paint individual leather strips that uh, make up the miniature and I find that actually frustrating so by base coating it all in the same color with this espresso color it kind of takes care of that leather for us as well at the same time it also acts a really good base coat for us to layer our colors upon because there's a lot of brown colors within the uh, untamed beast warband so that's exactly what I used I used uh, rust-oleum's primer plus paint um, espresso spray it cost about five bucks at my local Walmart it's nice good cheap and you can use a lot of it so uh, that's step number one so for the next three steps, for steps two, three, and four, we're gonna do a series of heavy dry brushes. And the very first color we end up using is Territorial Beige by uh, Apple Barrel Paints. As you can see on this photo here, I just did a really quick heavy dry brush on the entirety of the model to pick up the details. So that way it looks a little bit easier to paint up as well. Also, it adds a nice building of color up for all the leather, as well as the fur that it makes up a lot of these miniatures as well. Uh, Apple Barrel Paint is kind of nice because the Territorial Beige only runs you 50 cents. You get a two fluid ounce tube of it, and it's gonna last you forever. So that's exactly the very first color that I dry brushed onto the Untamed Beast. As you can see, brings on really nice, rich, warm color at the same time keeping the espresso in the recesses in order to create shadows as well as some depth. Okay, for step number three, we do exactly the same thing. We drub brush the entire miniature. This time we use khaki as the color we're using. This is also another color by Apple Barrel Paint. It's a two ounce tube that costs you about 50 cents at your local Walmart. And once again, do another layer of heavy dry brushing as well. So what this does as well is kind of builds up some more layers as well as colors to the fur as well as to the parts of the body that are gonna be leather based as well. So you have a nice dark espresso in the recesses. You have a nice layer of territorial beige on top of that. And now you picked up your highlights with some khaki color as well. So that part is really easy as you can see it's really brought up a lot of the details in fact for all the fur and leather portions of these miniatures which in my opinion is the most frustrating thing to paint uh, those parts are pretty much done at this point and the last of the dry brushing in step number four is to use Granite Gray by Apple Barrel Paints as well. And this time we're a little bit more selective of where we put the dry brushing on this one. I primarily put it on where the fur tufts are. So if you look at the majority of the uh, of the Untamed Beasts on the top of their cloaks, they have kind of like a shoulder guard of fur. Same thing with the mane on the uh, Rock Prowler as well. So I just used that and did a really quick dry brush on that. Now if you are if you do make a mistake, like you see here on the top of the left hand side, the guy with the bone harpoon, I got a little bit of the gray on his shoulder. Now, to worry because when we get to the next step when we actually start base coating the flesh color that's going to be covered up with the flesh color paint so no real worries on that part as well so all you got to do is a quick once over with the dry brush for granite gray and all the fur tufts and you're pretty much done with the dry brushing uh, from the miniatures in this one so that completes this step of the dry brushing phase so for step number five, we're actually gonna start base coating our miniatures now. And this time I used Flesh Color by Apple Barrel Paint. It's another wonderful product that's made by that company. Once again, costs you 50 cents per tube, a flu two fluid ounces worth as well. And I just painted the flesh colors on these miniature with the flesh color from Apple Barrel. I will warn you now, there is a lot of skin on these miniatures, so you gotta go about looking for where it is. And the nice part about it is, is because you don't have to worry about painting the leather strips on these miniatures because you've already done that with the dry brushing phases from earlier before. So all you gotta do is just be careful 
careful where the leather strips are and just paint in the gaps in between for all the flesh and you paint that nice flesh color. It makes it really, really easy as well and makes it very, very, uh, and it makes it to where you don't have to worry about overspilling and making mistakes on those leather strips. They just kind of take care of themselves at this point. Now, I will warn you, you will need to use two thin coats of the flesh colored paint in order to get a good base color for the flesh. And that's exactly what I did for all these miniatures here. As you can see, all the exposed skin, I have did a wonderful little uh, paint job there, adding two thin coats of the flesh color. And uh, you do exactly the same thing on yours. All right, so now we go to step number six. We're doing the base coating for all the metallics as well as the cording on these miniatures as well. You also need to work on all the bone bits as well. And I kind of made a mistake on this one. I forgot to show the color pictures of me base coating the uh, bone portions of the miniature as well as the cording and the uh, cloth on the characters as well. So I do apologize on that part. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, the color I use for all the bones. So for these are the blades, the weapons, the horns, the claws. All those colors, I use exactly the same color, which is khaki. That's all I did. So I just reapplied the khaki on a base coast for all that so you can see there the miniature in the middle there his horns and his weapons he's got a nice good khaki color as well that's the color used for that one. Also, when it comes to the cordings, as you can see, their weapon grips, as well as the cording around their wrists, as well as their ankles, and even bits of cloth if you wanted to as well. I paint that in light blue. That's another product by Apple Barrel Paint. It's a two ounce, uh, two fluid ounce tube. It costs you 50 cents, and it's a nice bright blue color, kind of a rich color as well. And I just go ahead and was slapped on uh, one thin coat actually of that one all over the miniature. I did exactly the same thing with the khaki as well. I only put one thin coat on because you know the shading beneath it is pretty much good enough as it is. So as you can see, here, all the cording of that character in the middle, he's got all of his fabric that I wanted painted blue. I did that. I also did exactly the same thing with all the bone. Now there is a few metallic items on these characters for the Untamed Beast. There's not very many of them, but there is a couple of pieces. So we're going to talk about that real quick. For the silver bits, I used Silver Anniversary by Folk Art. And the reason why I used that bright steel color is because when we get done with the oil washing on these miniatures, that's going to really darken it down. So that's the reason why I went with a brighter silver color so that way you can tell which parts will be silver on the miniature. Um, I used that for the helmets for uh, most of the, uh, I think the Heart Eater is what his name, the lead in the back there. I also use it on the uh, the Executioner's Hood for the guy armed with the harpoon, as well as the two warriors who's got a horn helms as well. I put that silver color on there i also put the uh, silver on all the little pieces of metal that holds the letter strips together the buckles for all of the miniatures as well and then i use the folk arts pure gold color i use that for the belly plate that's on every single buddy's uh, midsection which shows the untamed beast emblem i use that color as well for all those pieces and then once you're done base coating all of your miniatures with the metallics as well as the blue and the khaki you're pretty much done with all the base coating at this point so it's at this point that we're actually at the halfway point. And as you can see here, this warband is looking actually pretty good with all the base coats that we've done. We've done all the leather bits, we've done all the fabric, and as well as the cording. We've done all the bones and the claws, all that's taken care of, all the metallics are all done. And if you actually wanted to stop at this phase, you technically could if you wanted to. These guys are battleful ready, and you can really start playing these guys if you want to. Now the next few steps I'm going to be showing you guys are optional. Um, I would highly recommend it because, one, they're really easy to do, and two, when you get done with the detail work, it makes it look really awesome as well. And as you can see here as well if you notice the three planes runners are in the top i also use some different color of paints for the little uh top knots that they have on the left hand side i use tomato red by apple barrel paint i use magenta bright magenta for the planes runner there in the middle and i use apple green for the planes running the far right hand side and all three of those are made by apple barrel paints all three are two ounce tubes and all three are worth 50 cents if you want to do exactly the same thing with yours giving them for bright color you can do that as well if you don't want to it's up to you how you want to proceed with that i just did that because i think it makes it look really cool as well you know adds a little bit of color to an otherwise kind of a monochromatic color scheme and that's what i did for that part so uh, do whatever you like but this is what it ends up looking like by the time you get to the midway point so now we're done with the base coating and the dry brushing it's time to put these guys to an oil wash all right, so for the oil wash on this one, for step number seven, I use Minwax Poly Shades. I used the Mission Oak color. I took an equal amount of poly shade and I mixed it, cut it a little bit with the equal amount of paint thinner to make it run a little bit easier as well. And then I do an all over wash over the entirety of the miniature. The nice thing about the Minwax Poly Shades, it pretty much does exactly the same thing that Army Painter Strong Tone does. It, in fact, it does exactly the same job. The difference though is that Army Painter Strong Tone usually runs you about $36 a can, whereas a can of Minwax Poly Shades, Mission Oak, runs you about seven so needless to say i'm with the cheap stuff as you can see i just apply that mixture all over the entire the miniature the oil shade does a really nice job getting into all the recesses and, and flattening down all your colors as well and if you notice as well it also darkens the flesh as well as all the bright colors that you use on your miniatures as well so if you're wondering why i use such bright 
bold colors at the beginning of the base coating uh, portion of the work is this is the reason why is because the poly shades is going to really darken it down a lot so that's the reason why you want to use bright colors in order to make that happen as well and plus and i'm also a big fan of bright colors for my uh my different armies that i paint up for my uh for my studio so that's the reason why i did it as well now the mid wax poly shades will take about 24 hours for it to dry so just leave it there for the evening and or whatever you're painting these miniatures and come back to it the next day to continue on with the rest of the steps so we enter step number eight, and on this step, I actually spray the miniatures down with a matte spray varnish, is what I end up using. Uh, the reason why is because the Midwax Poly Shade does make them look a little candy coated, makes them look a little shiny on that part, so I don't care for that look on my miniatures. I like them to be more subdued and matte, so I use some Rist uh, some Krylon uh, matte finish. It's just really cheap. It's about five bucks per can from Walmart, and I just give them the ones over, and as you can see there, it mats down the, var the shine. It also flattens the color a little bit, so you can really see the details now. As you can see, you can see the it rippling muscle effects you can see the muscle definition you can see the tufts of fur the individual wrappings of the cording of all of the characters it also adds a lot of depth to it too so these guys look like they're really dirty like they've been out in the fields fighting in the open savannah so it looks really awesome as well and once you spray that matte varnish you're pretty much done with the miniatures all you gotta do now for the next following step is do the work on the basing on this part so we're going to talk about exactly what colors i use in order to do that so step number 10 is the base coating of the uh, piles of ruins that some of these miniatures are standing on. They actually have some sculpted bases on these where they're standing on top of some old ruins. Now the ruins I use for my war cry terrain, I kind of paint, painted them in kind of like an ethereal bluish turquoise color. So that's exactly the same thing I did for the bases on these guys as well. I painted all of it with folk art skyline color. That's a two ounce tube that's going to run you about 65 cents. I bought mine at Hobby Lobby. And as you can see, it's a really close match to the ruins that I have that I use for my war game terrain as well. So that part was really Really cool and it's just really simple just give it the once over you don't really need to worry about putting two coats on the uh, skyline blue on this one because any brown that shows through uh, from the base will actually add to the effect of it making looking weathered and worn and also dirty as well which is exactly what I did when I made my war cry terrain and uh, that's the way it comes out in that one so that's all I need to do for that portion so once you've taken care of the different bits of ruins, step number 11 is to base coat the entirety of the base. On the top of it, I base coat it with a single layer of pavement uh, by Apple Barrel Paint. It's another two ounce tube that runs at 50 cents as well. And as you can see, I just painted on top of the base. Now, if you're wondering where I got the texture from, I've done earlier videos in Cheap Shots to show you a really cheap and cost effective way to base your miniatures. All it is is just sand and wood glue is all it is. I just put a thin layer of wood glue all over the base. I throw some sand on top of it that I get from a local sandbox right in the backyard. I then seal it with another layer of wood glue and water mixture to seal it all together and that gives a nice little texture. So uh, with that texturing I just paint it over with pavement. Uh, the reason why is because for all my chaos themed armies I have this kind of like ashen wasteland look on all the bases that the armies march on to make it look like the the world they're walking the land they're walking on is all burnt out and you know wastelandy. So that's the reason why I did that so I use a base coat of pavement in order to do that step number 12 for the base I do a quick dry brush once again using folk arts burnt sienna on this color that's the color I end up using on this one it's another 65 cent uh, tube that you can buy at Hobby Lobby it's two fluid ounces so you'll never run out of it once you buy a bottle of it so as you can see in this photo I just did a quick dry brush over the black pavement portion of the bases uh, you just gotta be a little bit careful in this step just to make sure you don't do, uh, accidentally apply the uh, burnt sienna onto the uh, blue ruins of the uh, that the character standing on if you do that's no biggie you can just touch up real quick with some skyline blue so it's not such a big idea it's just that it's one little touch up thing you don't really want to worry about so all you gotta do is do a once over with the burnt sienna and the dry brushing is done for that color and the very last dry brush that we put on the miniatures is a dry brush of granite gray. This is the same granite gray that we used earlier in the phase to do some uh, dry brushing for the bodies. I just add a thin layer of it on top of the burnt sienna to make it look like there's some ash and a uh, collection of some burnt uh, stuff on the top of the surface. It really makes it look really, really awesome. It makes it look really wastelandy as well. And that pretty much finishes up the dry brushing work you need to do on the base texture. And for the final step, for step number 14, you got to paint the rim of the bases, and I base coat that with two thin layers of Folk Arts Burnt Sienna. Another, you know, once again, it's the same color we used earlier. I use exactly the same thing for the base, so that way it goes around the rim to make it look like it's really awesome and looks like it really pops as well. And that pretty much finishes up the uh, Untamed Beasts. 
And voila, here is the final result from the miniature. As you can see, it was really easy to paint, very cheap to paint as well, and it looks really awesome as well. There's a very limited palette that's used for these guys, and so it's very, very easy and very, very quick to paint these guys up. Now, will this win any painting competitions? I don't know, it might. I mean, I did a pretty good job on these. I'm not ashamed of the way these guys came out. It's a really cheap and cost-effective way to quickly paint up some untamed, war be uh, untamed beasts for Warcry. So now that we're done with the miniatures, now it's time to talk about the exactly the cost savings uh, that's involved in this painting technique. Technique. The very next slide, I'm going to show you the entirety of the warband fully completed, and we're going to run through a laundry list of the paints required that Citadel recommends that you use for these miniatures. Now, the list of paints that I use for the next list is based off of the recommended, recommended list that they require on their how to paint videos on Warhammer TV on YouTube. We're going to show you exactly what colors they recommend and the cost that it costs them, uh, the cost of each of the paints, uh, according to the Games Workshop website. So, that being said, let's go ahead and start with the Citadel color range. All right, so let's go with the Citadel color range for the Untamed Beasts. For these guys, I recommend Korax White Spray for the base coat, which runs you $19.50. After that, you will also need the following uh, paints. I believe these are all, um, what you call it, um, just regular base coats, I believe. You'll need Gray Sear, Flayed One Flesh, Ulthawan Gray, Cadian Flesh Tone, Bane Blade Brown, Wraith Bone, Steel Legion Drab, Iron Hands Steel, Storm Host Silver, Balthazar Gold. All those were running about $4.55 a piece, and those are just really small. I don't even know how many milliliters they are. I think it's 25 mil is what they are. Uh, so it's like a huge fraction of the normal paint that I use, and they all cost you about $4.50. So that's kind of crazy. After that, you also have to use some contrast paints as well as some washes from them. Uh, you'll be using Nuln Oil, Agrax Earth. Shade, Apothecary White, Gulliman Flesh, uh, Steel Horde, uh, Skeleton Horde, as well as Gorgrunt of Fur, Wildwood, Black Templar, Contrast Medium, Astro Granite, and all that costs $7.80 per tub. Now, the tubs are a little bit larger, I will give them that, but they cost $7.80 a piece, so pretty pricey right there. And lastly, you need Tyrant Skull, which is their dry brush paint that also runs you $4.55. If you were to buy everything on this list and use it like they show in the painting tutorial on YouTube, the grand total for that painting list is going to be $100. $147.55. So that's a huge chunk. In fact, it's almost the price of the starting box of Warcry, just to put that into perspective for you guys. And that's the price it's going to pay for you to paint it up in the Citadel color range. So now we're going to talk about my method, my cheapskate, uh, cheapskate quick paint method. We're going to show you exactly the materials I use and the costs associated with it and the difference in savings. So here's my Commander Cheapskate's quick paint method. The first thing you'll need, of course, is a can of Rustoleum Paint and Primer Satin Espresso Spray Paint. That's going to run you five bucks. You also need a can of Rustoleum Matte Varnish Spray to do the varnish part of it. That will cost you another five dollars as well. And a can of Midwax Poly Shade, which runs you seven dollars. Now from Apple Barrel, you'll need the following paints from these. You'll need Territorial Beige, Khaki, Granite Gray, Flesh, Light Blue, Pavement, Magenta, Apple Green, and Tomato Red. Now Magenta, Apple Green, and Potato Red, I just use those colors because I wanted the colored top knots for my uh, warband, but you don't have to use those colors if you don't want to. It saves you an additional buck fifty if you don't want to use those. Anyway, all those apple barrel paints will run you fifty cents a piece. That's all they cost, and you get two fluid ounces per tube at the same time, so keep that in mind. Now we're getting to the more expensive paint, which is the most expensive paint on this list. You'll need Folk Art, Burnt Sienna, as well as Skyline. Those both run you 65 cents per tube. Once again, they're also two fluid ounces. And then finally, for Folk Art, you'll need metallic colors of Anniversary Silver, as well as Pure Gold, and those two tubes run you about 75 cents a piece as well. In the end, the grand total for my paint list and the materials will run you $24.30 to paint up the entirety of your warband. When you compare that to the $147.55 that is required from the Citadel paint range, you're talking about a grand saving total of $123.25 being saved. And I don't know about you, but you can buy quite a bit of miniatures with $123. In fact, you could actually probably buy two more warbands for your Warcry game, and you can use that instead and use my cheap paint method in order to paint those guys up as well. So as you can see, $123.25 are saved in inside your pocket. So that's going to do it for this one, you guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is invaluable to us, as always. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all these greatest news about the hobby aspect of our channel. That's going to do it for this one, you guys. We'll catch you guys on the next one. You guys stay cheap and classy. Catch you guys on the flip side. Peace out.